Hey guys, it's Josh from Active Tours, and today we're going to be doing one of my all-time favorite drives, the road to Hana. Now, there are a ton of things to see on this road trip, and you'll want to get up very early to get the most time on this journey. My advice is don't try to see everything on this list. Take a look at the video and pick your favorite things to do, but don't stress about seeing everything. Take your time. It's about quality, not quantity. I'm going to star my must-see locations to help you out as well, as well as a few other icons to help give you a feel for what is here. I'm going to assume that we're doing this drive in one day, but if you have longer, definitely stay in the town of Hana and take your time. Also, the whole reason I drive the road to Hana is to get to one of the last locations on this list, so be sure to stick around to the end of the video. Let's get going. The first stop is Piahi or Jaws. It's Maui's biggest surfing break, and when the waves are going off here, the top surfers in the world flock to this island to surf the 80-foot waves. It's impossible to get to this location without a four-wheel drive vehicle, and even so, you're going to want to make sure that the surf report looks great. As most days, it's not worth trying to get to at all. Number two, Twin Falls. Now, Twin Falls are on private land, but the owners allow you to explore the falls and land anyway. Mahalo Nui Loa. I think most people stop and take a look at the first falls and keep going, but I recommend that you take the extra hike and look at the magnificent Twin Falls. The hike is very easy, and you'll have to do one stream crossing as well, but it makes for pretty great fun. If you get here early, I expect you to be the only ones at the falls, so enjoy. Remember to provide donations or buy some banana bread at the stand to support the landowners. A little bit down the road, there's a patch of bamboo, and you're going to want to pull over and take a look. There's a little break in the forest, and then you'll be taken down a muddy trail in a bamboo wonderland. This hike takes you to a stream crossing and then to a waterfall with a pool and a big swing as well. Next on the list is the Waikamoi Nature Trail. This short but fantastic 0.9 mile trail gives you a quick feel for the rainforest on this side of Maui. Its loop provides you with wonderful views along the way. The trail along with most of the hikes on this side of the island is definitely muddy, so you'll want to be sure to bring appropriate gear with you. There's going to be a link in the description for all the gear that I bring on a trip to Maui. If you like this video so far, hit that thumbs up. It really helps me with the YouTube algorithm. Next is the Garden of Eden Arboretum. And it's another great stop along the way on the road to Hana, and the entrance fee is $15. They have 26 acres of trails and tropical plants for you to walk around, and one of their claims to fame is that you can see the island from the start of Jurassic Park from their property. Next, the K&A Arboretum. Now, if you appreciate exotic flora, this six-acre free-of-charge arboretum is a must-stop on the road to Hana. The entrance is totally unassuming, and I bet most people just fly on by, but I recommend stopping here to explore the grounds. The highlight of the arboretum is the rainbow eucalyptus with their beautiful bark, and I also recommend heading to the other end of the grounds to see the taro ponds. Taro is an extremely important ingredient in the Hawaiian culture. I recommend trying some poi while you're on the Hawaiian Islands. Number seven on the list on the road to Hana is the K&A Lookout. The K&A Peninsula is an awe-inspiring half-mile long outcropping of newer lava sticking out from the Hana Highway. On April 1st, 1946, the area was almost completely destroyed by a tsunami generated by an 8.6 magnitude earthquake off the coast of Alaska. Devastatingly, this village lost 20 children and 4 teachers to the massive 35-foot waves. The only building left standing was the church. Next is Ching's Pond. It's a quick stop on the road to Hana for a thrill seeker because it's best known for its picturesque cliff jumping location and a place to cool off on hot summer days. While it's a nice stop and perfect to line up a shot of the bridge and the waterfall, if you're running out of time, just roll on by. Next is the Nihiku Marketplace. A lot of people will recommend bringing your own food on the road to Hana to save time. I highly recommend against it. Imagine for a moment that you live along this road and millions of tourists a year speed back and forth along the road that you live on without ever helping the locals that live there. Now while I don't think we're going to stop people from driving crazy on the road, we can give back to the locals that have small roadside stands here and the Nahiku Marketplace is one of the many great stops for food along the road. 
my friends Mike and Annie recommend the Hulu Hulu Chicken. And if you ask them which one, they'll say the stand on the side of the road on the way to Hana, meaning they're all great. Number 10, the Hana Lava Tube. Now, if you've never been inside a lava tube before, you gotta check it out. It's a stunning example of nature's most destructive and creative forces. There's something very amazing exploring inside one of these tubes. You can see a lot of stalactites and stalagmites, as well as bones from animals that have fallen inside the lava tube from years past. Now, if you've been inside a lava tube before on the Big Island or somewhere else, you can probably skip it, but otherwise, I recommend going. One of the highlights of the road to Hana is Wai Napa Napa State Park. Now, Wai Napa Napa means glistening water, and the state park is one of the main highlights on the road to Hana. The black sand beach at Wai Napa Napa State Park is mesmerizing, but don't let that fully distract you from the other features that make this state park amazing. Now, just at the bottom of the black sand beach is a small lava cave that is gorgeous and small and hidden enough that you can probably have a moment or two inside the cave all to yourself. On the other side of the beach is a trail where you can explore the lava filled coastline around the surrounding cliffs. You can see a number of different sea arches and there is even a freshwater cave that once upon a time a Hawaiian princess was murdered in. Now around here you're gonna have to really be time sensitive. There's some places at the end of the road that close early and so if you want to go to places like the Seven Sacred Pools or the Pipi Vai Trail, which I highly recommend, you're going to want to make sure you save some time for that in the end of the day. More on those places a little bit later. The twelfth stop on the list is the town of Hana. Now, the road to Hana is all about the journey and not the destination. The town is a sleepy destination with not much else to do other than relax. If you have some time, I recommend you stay a night in Hana, not only to give back to the community, but also just so you can take your time exploring the road. If you're driving it all in one day, I recommend that you stop here on your way back home or skip it all entirely. Number 13 is the Hana Ranch Restaurant. Now, if you do end up staying the night here or you're like me and you didn't really get a chance to eat lunch, you can stop here at the Hana Ranch restaurant for a nice meal on your way back to town. I ended up ordering the local plate, which was full of flavors that remind me of Hawaii. Lomi salmon, Kalua pork, lao lao. It was delicious. Number 14 on the road is Koki Beach Park. The red dark sand at Koki Beach was produced by the nearby cylinder cone hill, Kalawa o Pele meaning bones of Pele. According to Hawaiian legend, Koki Beach is where the Hawaiian goddess Pele fought her final battle with her older sister, the goddess of the ocean. Pele's bones were stacked along the Koki shoreline and her spirit traveled to the big island. Number 15 is Hamoa Beach. This is a picture-perfect crescent-shaped white sand beach with a super consistent surf break. Now, having driven the road to Hana a few times, it's my favorite beach on the road to Hana. The black sand beach at Wainapanaba is amazing and is a must-see if you've never been. But if all you're looking for is to relax on the beach without hordes of people, then this is your beach. The Waioka Pond, aka the Venus Pools. Wow, this place is amazing. It was the last stop on my way back from the road to Hana, and I was super happy that I stopped here. There was a local doing some crazy cliff jumps off the rocks here. It was amazing to watch. Next time I visit, I'll definitely be spending more time here relaxing in the pool. Waioka's meaning is said to be derived from another Hawaiian word that means open mouth to fresh water. Okay, so next we have Wailua Falls. Now, this isn't the Wailua Falls on Kauai, but it is probably Maui's most photographed waterfall. While you might be getting really tired of waterfalls, I know it's kind of weird to say, this one is so beautiful. This is easily one of Maui's most accessible and majestic waterfalls. No hiking is required. I do recommend that if you are running short on time at this waterfall, see it on the way back home. 
Next we have the Ohio Gulch or Seven Sacred Pools. It's often the destination or the turnaround point for the journey on the road to Hana. This part of the island is actually part of the Haleakala National Park and it would be best to time this drive with a visit to the summit of Haleakala as the entrance fee for both is good for three days. I recommend you taking the loop counterclockwise around the falls so that you can walk along the lookouts while facing the falls. There are a few spots to turn in and visit the pools themselves, but unfortunately I've never been there while they've been open. Uh, leave a comment below if you know when the gates open. I'm assuming in the summer. Okay, so next is the Pee Pee Vi Trail. It's absolutely the highlight of my journey on this road. The trailhead is right next to the Ohio Gulch, and you'll want to make sure you get to the trailhead fairly early, as they have a park ranger telling people that the park closes at 5 p.m. Now, I recommend getting here at least by 3 p.m. if you're going to do this trail. It's a 3.4 mile round trip hike that highlights a bamboo forest, a huge sprawling banyan tree, a number of smaller waterfalls, and the crown jewel, the Waimuku Falls. The trail is definitely not to be missed and is the whole reason I travel this whole road every single time I come to Maui. This trail is absolutely my favorite. Next is Charles Lindbergh's grave. He was an American aviator, a military officer, an author, inventor, and activist. Lindbergh's grave is a simple granite slab laid upon some lava stones and located behind a church. Okay guys, I hope you enjoyed this road trip showing you the top 20 things to do on the road to Hana. If you like this video, please hit that subscribe button. Also, that like button really helps me with the YouTube algorithm. And comment below on what you're looking forward to seeing the most on the road to Hana. Thanks again, I'm Josh from Active Tours. Aloha and mahalo.